Sarajevo, an ancient symbol of European coexistence lost in 1992. For months on end, this proved to be its destiny. Shells and missiles coming in ones, in twos, in threes, random and indiscriminate, leaving behind an eerie sound as if the city's crying and setting it spectacularly ablaze. Bosnia and its capital Sarajevo in particular had symbolized the spirit of Yugoslavia, a place where Muslim, Serb and Croat lived side by side, none ruled alone. But with the old Yugoslav Federation disintegrating around it, the Bosnian government at the end of February held a referendum on independence. The Muslim and Croat communities voted in favor, but most of the Serbs boycotted the ballot. It was a recipe for disaster. Within hours of the massive approval of the referendum being announced, barricades had sprung up in the predominantly Serb districts of Sarajevo. The gunmen hid their faces, not their intentions. Radicalized by the revolt of their fellow Serbs in Croatia the previous year, and by the almost pathological nationalism of their leaders, they took up the call for partition through arms, and with it a medieval ideology of ethnic purity. In massive rallies for peace, Sarajevo's spirit of coexistence for a time held the gunmen at bay. Even triumph when the gunmen opened fire on the demonstrators in Marinvor Square. But the triumph proved a short-lived illusion. By April, Sarajevo and the rest of Bosnia was at war. With snipers vying for control of districts where just eight short years before, the athletes of the Winter Olympics strolled. Through their control of the old Yugoslav army, the Serbs enjoyed an enormous overweight in weaponry. Yet, curiously, in Sarajevo that has proved insufficient. After weeks of embittered, often bloody negotiation, they were forced to withdraw from all of the city's barracks, leaving most of Sarajevo in the hands of an unlikely alliance, the professional, the amateur, and the criminal. Men with different motives, yet the same goal of halting total Serb domination. But while the Serbs controlled just a small part of this elongated city, stretched along the valley floor beside the river Meljatska, they do hold all the high ground. From their bunkers in the hills, the Serb gunners have every street in their sights. And in Sarajevo, they don't just snipe with rifles. In May, an incident that shocked the world out of its insensitivity, and a simple shopping trip for bread ended in atrocity. Mortar bombs landing amongst the civilians. The responsibility for this and other acts of carnage never fully proven. Many blame the Serbs, but they in turn accuse the Muslims of firing on their own people. Whoever fired the rounds, Sarajevo had become the most dangerous place on earth. A place where young evacuees were strapped into their bus seats, yet still shot at and hit where not even the funeral services were sacred. A place quite simply where any venture outdoors could end in death. And never more so than on the narrow track linking the city proper to its western suburb of Dobrinja. For months, Dobrinja's 40,000 inhabitants were totally cut off, suffering a siege within a siege with hardly any water, hugely insufficient stocks of food, an improvised makeshift hospital. This in an area so bereft of cover that the dead could only be buried at night by the roadside. Innocent victims none more so than Sarajevo's children, including the most tiny. One of the first buildings hit was the maternity hospital, which found itself in the wrong place at the wrong time, on the front line. Battered by Serb shelling, 
It was finally evacuated before the wards with empty rows of cots became the domain of militiamen and snipers. The babies were moved to the Koshevo, Sarajevo's massive academic hospital, a place where eventually they were all casualties of war, some directly, some indirectly, like two-month-old Zanara Ajic, born with a heart defect that would have proved fatal had she not finally been evacuated after weeks of negotiation and an international outcry. Repeatedly, the Bosnian government forces tried to end the confinement of the little patients by trying to break through the Serb siege. But as often as they tried, they failed, leaving all Sarajevo's hospitals engulfed in further agony with seemingly endless streams of casualties brought through their doors. The Serb response to any attempted breach of their lines was invariably the same. Barrages of cannon and rocket which slammed into Sarajevo's symbols of government war of its modern prosperity, shrouding them in flames. Every night in Sarajevo, you think it can't get worse, but it does, making a mockery of the attempts of mediators to bring peace to this city, which is enfolded in war. Yet while the war has not ended, with the resistance of Sarajevo's defenders being broken, it is the Serb leaders who look back upon 1992 as a year of victory. While well, the world's attention was held by the extraordinary fate of Europe's youngest capital and the plight of its innocent inhabitants, a more sinister and brutal form of human suffering was about to be uncovered, away from Sarajevo, in Bosnia's dark hills.